G'day folks, it's Rob here. Thought I'd post a little bit of a clip in regards to planting out sweet potato slips. Had a few people ask me how to do it after they saw a couple of harvest clips we've done recently. There's one from a pouch garden at the back stairs and also a volunteer harvest we did from a barrel down the back here. Uh, a lot of you folks in the Northern Hemisphere are getting ready to sort out your plots now, if you haven't started already that is. So yeah, people were just asking how is a good way to start them off. I'll be doing it in containers today. It pretty much all goes the same um, for planting them out in soil um, in your garden beds. The only difference is you'll be using the soil in the beds. I'm using a container and I've added in some potting mix along with compost and casting. So there's no real difference between the two as to how you actually plant them out. For the sweet potatoes, they generally like warm weather. Um, so it's a good idea if you're in an area that has frost to wait until the soil warms up and the last chance of your frost state has passed before you put any of these guys in the ground outside. Now, a great way to extend your growing season is to start the slips off early inside. Um, I'll show you a couple of techniques you can use in a minute um, just to get those slips growing so you can plant them out early. Now, you can grow sweet potatoes just by putting the um, seed sweet potato straight in the ground or cutting off sections with um, sprouts on them. But I've found for, with my own experience and also too from talking to others and reading up online, you do get a better yield from a growing via a slip. So that's the method I'll be pretty much all showing you today. What I'll be doing is planting them in this pouch, growing them up this trellis beside me here so they can reach up a nice and high and get the sun through winter. Anyway, I'll stop nattering on. I'll bring you down and give you a look at the sweet potatoes with the slips growing on them and also to the tube stock I've ordered in. So here you go folks, here's a couple of small sweet potatoes we didn't cook. I just put them in a tray of water uh, just to see if we could get some slips growing and they've obviously done very well. This one here has actually had two other slips formed that I've broken off just there near my thumb and up there. So a very easy way to create planting material to go out into the patch. Easy enough to do. Um, you just take off a section of this bit here, a little bit over a foot. I'll just grab my scissors. Should have had all my props ready. <laughs> it's as easy as snipping him off there. Oh, we might leave some of those roots on. Then taking off some of these lower leaves. These leaves actually, you could pop into a salad if you wanted. You can eat sweet potato leaves. They're from a different family than the normal humble spud. And then it's pretty much all ready to go into the pouch, which I'll show you in the minute. Now another method to create slips like this is to get a sweet potato, a large one, pop it into a jar, it'll send off shoots and it's pretty much all the same thing. I just had a lot of these small ones laying around so I put it in a tray of water. Now these actually come off a sweet potato plant that's growing in our lime tree or herb bed. Uh, I'll just start snipping off some of these leaves. I'll actually be um, making this slip a little bit shorter. But I just wanted to show you how the roots form on these guys. So just at the base of where the um, leaf forms, you can see a, a small nodule there with a couple of spiky things growing out of it. There's a small underdeveloped one on the other side. That's pretty much all where the roots are going to grow out of the slip down into the soil and form your sweet potato. So that's why it's good to get a, a section with at least a couple of um, nodules on it or leaf sections um, just to give you, you know, a decent set of roots growing down into the soil. I've actually decided that I'm going to grow out um, the one that I pulled off the sweet potato, the one that we grew in the tray and this one here along with my Hawaiian sunshine sweet potato we got from Green Harvest. Uh, so this one has two sisters planted out the front um, and they're doing really well, a lot better than this one. It's, it's a little bit stunted. I actually pulled off a whole heap of roots just before so it's probably not very happy with me. So with this one here I'm pretty much all going to do the same thing. Trim off a lot of the base leaves. Um, might actually take off this whole branch. Ah, oh, sorry fella. Uh, some of these smaller ones up the top here as well. And I think I'll just leave those three little leaves at the top there. And this whole thing will be planted in like a slip. Another way to get a bit of a jump start on your spring slips is to plant out a couple of sweet potatoes just into a small tray with some soil or potting mix towards the end of winter. Um, sand, you can use sand as well. Um, keep the media just a little bit moist and that will um, get the sweet potato to send up shoots that you can then chop off later and plant out as slips. I mean, if you want to get really fancy, you could use a nice little ornamental pot and um, yeah, you might end up with a bit of a vine growing, but you can snip off multiple endpoints and use them as slips to plant out later. Um, now we'll get these slips into the soil before I get rained on. 
So this is the container or root pouch they're going out into. Um, the planting method the cell itself is exactly the same as if you were going to plant them out into the soil. This is a 95 litre bag just to give you an idea or a 25 gallon bag. So half half compost to um, potting mix. Also added in a little bit of sand, probably about oh, a gallon and a half or six or seven litres. And then I've also added in just under two gallons or ten litres of worm castings from Brian the Worm Man. Thank you, mate. Um, so hopefully there's going to be enough nutrition in this pouch to keep these guys going. Uh, also, too, I'll feed them with a liquid feed if I notice any deficiencies in the um, leaves at all. As for planting it out, pretty basic. Um, the way I've positioned it is I want the roots to sort of remain away from each other. So we have this bendy one up this end with the um, kink print, uh, pointing up. I have the one from the sweet potato um, in the tray. It's sort of going diagonally across and the purple sunshine will go um, across the back here. Um, so hopefully we'll have roots here, a few roots here and some roots down in this end here. So now to plant them out, uh, pretty easy. Just pull back some dirt. So I'm going to go down almost uh, five centimetres or two inches. Dig a little bit of a trench for them to sit in. It's as easy as that. And then just cover them back up. I mean, it's not really, you know, too complex at all. Just as long as your greenery is poking out the end there. Make a bit of a trench this way. Just pop him down, cover him over. And again, just try and keep his greenery out. Now this guy over here, as you can see, Extremely root bound and should have been planted out a few weeks ago. Pretty much we're going to give him the same treatment. Just a little bit deeper down this end. Pull the end bits out. And that's pretty much all it. And hopefully, if you stick around and keep watching our channel, you'll see these guys grow through the season. So from here the idea is these vines, um, I'll train them to begin with just to latch onto the um, wire here. And they'll, after that they pretty much will um, wind their own way up here. Anything that comes down onto the ground I'll try and move up and um, wrap them around the wire as well. So yeah, they don't become a tripping hazard. Just to let you folks who are into root pouches know as well, I have got the um, pouch sitting inside of a 200 litre drum or 50 gallon drum I've cut off. Um, it's actually <laughs> where the volunteer um, sweet potatoes were harvested from. I just cut the bottom off the drum. What that's going to do is one is going to stop roots growing through the root pouch into the ground and ending up with more escapee sweet potatoes growing in the patch but also too it's going to act as a bit of a water reservoir. Um, just hold a little bit of water in the base there. Um, there's a bit of basic potting mix down there so yeah it shouldn't go too anaerobic or anoxic. So for watering, I'll pretty much will just be watering this once or twice a week, um, just if the soil looks dry. Also too, once they've established themselves a bit, I'll probably come back and give it a bit of a um, coating with the sugarcane mulch as well. So I'll give you a quick idea how this is set out. Um, it's in the root pouch there underneath the trellis. It's an extension of an existing one. Um, it's actually facing north, the trellis itself. That means it'll capture all the winter sun as it goes through the sky. Being in the southern hemisphere, um, our sun comes from the north in winter. If I was in the northern hemisphere, I'd have the whole trellis facing south. So just to give you a bit of a heads up on where it's located and why I've situated it here. So as you saw, it really is easy to start these little sweet potato slips out. The number one problem I've seen most people have is one that I have myself with seeds, is remembering to actually get them started. Uh, I know a lot of people um, put it off to the last minute. And if you're in a colder climate and spring hits and you haven't got the, uh, the um, slips ready, you can be a bit behind the eight ball. Probably a, a a, a couple of months before your last frost date, get those sweet potatoes into a glass of water, tray of water, in a tray of sand or soil, so you've got those slips ready whenever your last frost date has ended. So uh, I really like the idea of keeping them as a bit of a house plant uh, through winter. If they get a little bit rambunctious, you can always take the leaves off and throw them in salads and whatnot. So yeah, no loss there. So if you like what you see and you haven't subscribed yet, feel free to hit that little button up there and you can check a box. And every time I upload a clip to YouTube, you can come along and see what's going on in our small little backyard farm. I'll pop a couple of thumbnails there as well, just how we plan out things like the sweet potato and also maybe one on the wicking beds, how we make them up and the barrels and IBCs and whatnot. So there you you go. I really do hope that you've enjoyed the clip folks and everyone is well and happy. I will catch you next weekend for the regular upload on Sunday if you're in Australia and next Saturday if you're in the States and other places around the world. So cheers folks and have a great one. Just to let you know I took pity on the small branch. I chopped off the Hawaiian sunshine sweet potato, planted him out here with the galangal. Have a great one all.